This is Darren Chiu from Philip Investor Center, Jurong East. Today I'm going to talk to you a topic called SRS. Okay. Actually, what is SRS? SRS actually means Supplementary Retirement Scheme. Okay. Before I talk about the SRS, uh, this is a disclaimer. Whatever I share with you is for information only. It doesn't contribute any financial advice. Okay. SRS is a voluntary scheme that encourages individuals to save for their retirement. Okay. The entire amount that you contribute to your SIS account is tax deductible. And 50% of the accumulated SIS saving will not be taxed when you withdraw after you reach the statutory retirement age. The current maximum contribution for SIS for Singaporeans and PR is 15300 and for foreigners is 35700 Okay, When you reach your statutory retirement age, okay, you are given a 10-year to withdraw the full amount. Okay, and you can withdraw as many times as possible after you reach your statutory retirement age. Fifty percent of the money we withdraw will be tax exempted. Okay, so the current retirement age since the inception of SIS is age sixty-two. Okay, what happens that if you need the money before you reach the statutory retirement age, can you withdraw your SIS money? Okay, yes, you can, but to take note, hundred percent of the sum. Um, some you withdraw will be subject to, to tax and you need to pay a 5% premature withdrawal penalty on the sum assured. Okay, unless you withdraw under certain circumstances like death, medical ground, bankruptcy, or for foreigners who have started a contribution, okay, 10 years ago, that means when your first contribution started for and 10 years later, you can start to withdraw your SRS. Okay. Um, is SRS worth your time? Okay, so that depends on how you look at it. Also, look at and what is your tax bracket. For example, if you are on a seven percent tax bracket, every ten thousand of money you contribute to your SRS, you have a tax savings of up to seven hundred dollars. So we have to look at it. Is seven hundred dollar worth your time to contribute to your SRS? Okay. Usually, I talk to our client. We'll tell them that okay. If you really have money, you plan to save for retirement, then why don't you just put your money into an SIS account, okay, and save for the tax and asset, then use this money to save for your retirement. Then in, in, indirectly, you also have an additional benefit on that, okay. Uh, this is an illustration on how an SIS account can help you on the retirement. For for example, if you contribute an SIS for 20 years, every year contribute 15300 just assume that the SIS you invest and you only grow at 2.5% per year. At the end of the 20 year, the amount will grow to become $391,445. So if you are to withdraw over the 10 year period, you have a money income stream of 3,262 tax free income. Okay. And so you will have a steady income stream from 62 to 71. Okay. However, do take note this tax free income is provided that at the time of withdrawal, you do not have any other sorts of taxable income. For example, rental income. Okay, if you have that, then of course you may need to pay certain amount of tax because your total amount, your SI withdrawal plus your rental income will definitely cross the minimum amount that need to be paid tax. Okay, this is an illustration to show that. If you were to contribute SIS on a yearly basis for 20 years, depending on what is your growth rate, let's say you grow able to grow your SIS money at 4% rate, at the end of 20 years, you'll become 456,000. If you just don't do anything, you'll be 306,000 you have contributed to your SRS. Okay, where can you open your SIS account? You can open your SIS account with the three local banks, DBS, OCBC, and UOB. Okay, and based on my understanding, uh, you want to open an SIS account, you don't need to go down to the bank in person. You can open this account online, okay? It is very fast and quite easy for every one of you. Okay, after you put your money into your SIS, what can you do with it? How what can you invest in it? Okay, by putting money in your SIS account, you take note that you only earn the savings interest rate. Lah. It is with pretty low. So we always encourage our client to make their money work harder when they contribute to the SIS. Minimum, if you are reservers, then actually you can put in sing dollar fixed deposit or you can even put in foreign currency fixed deposit with the bank. This will be actually much better than you just leave your SIS not doing anything. Okay. Or 
if you want something better return, higher, slightly higher return, you can consider Singapore government securities or Singapore savings bond. And this is pretty, we can say that it is pretty safe because this is made by a government, this bond are triple A rated bond. Okay. Uh, if you want to have better return, but you need to take some higher risk, then you can consider put into fixed income. We call the retail bond. These are some examples of the retail bond that's available. Okay, on the market for retail investor to invest in. I think no, you need to have a stock trading account, then you can buy on all this retail bond. Okay, uh, and I think you can consider is to invest your SRS into unit trust. Okay, there are close to 1,000 unit trust that you can use your SRS fund to invest in. Okay, this is just an example. For example, you can even invest in a unit trust that track the S&P 500. This, 500 or you can invest in a bond fund okay do take note that when you use the points platform the points platform to invest in unit trust the share charge is zero so practically means that whatever you invest will be 100 percent invested into the fund itself okay and you can also invest in stocks and shares okay so do take note SIS can only invest in stocks and shares that's listed on SGX okay but, but you can even invest in stock and share that is in USD currency, for example, Hong Kong land. It is listed in SGX, but the currency in USD. So, okay, but do take note when you want to invest, remember to select SRS and also make sure that your account, your SRS account is linked to your trading account. Okay, if not, you will not able to transact also. Uh, a lot of people want to put buy risk, so SRS also can invest in the close to the 40 risk listed in SGX. However, do take note, all the dividend payout from the REITs or stocks will go back to your SRS account. Okay, what about ETF? Okay, SRS also can also invest in ETF beside the Singapore Bond Index ETF, the STI ETF. STI also, uh, SRS can also invest in some of the foreign ETF, for example, like Vietnam ETF, okay, S&P 500 ETF. Okay, however, do think that this ETF have to be listed in SGX, then you can purchase, and there's a S, some of the ETF require you to be what uh, pass your SIP. It's a SIP product, so you need to pass your CK and CA, uh, then you can invest in. Okay. Uh, also, do think know that, uh, for example, we talk about S and P 500. You can buy the S and P 500 ETF on listed on SGX using an SRS. Okay. But this ETF compared to the S and P 500 ETF listed on US market, there will be some disparity, there will be some difference because the ETF listed in SGX, the liquidity will maybe much, much lesser compared to the liquidity of S&P 500 listed in the US market. Okay, so this one you need to think note of that. Okay, uh, can SI invest in foreign share ETF? The answer is no. Okay, SI can't invest in all those foreign share like ICBC Bank listed in Hong Kong. You can't even buy the S&P 500 that listed in U.S. market. Okay, when you go to a points function, you can't even see this fun this function for you to choose. Okay, so SIS can only buy shares listed in SGX. Okay, uh, but there's another way to go around it. Okay, there's something called a managed account. Okay, in, for us, we got a Philip managed account that we can help our client use our SIS money to invest in foreign shares or ETF. For example, you can see this is one of our our client portfolio, managed account portfolio, where you can invest in China shares, you can invest in Hai Di Lao listed in Hong Kong, you can invest in Alibaba listed in US, or PepsiCo listed in US. Okay, so this uh, managed account will able to help you to invest in overseas, okay, using an SIS account. So you want to know more, you can just contact us and we can discuss further. Okay, for those that are very risk averse, okay, SIS can invest in the single premium insurance plan okay but do take note there is a lock-in in it but a lot of people they don't mind because since SIS you plan to lock in for retirement so they will just buy this type of retirement plan what I show you is just two insurance companies actually there is more than two okay because I just show two for illustration purposes only if you want to know more you can actually contact us on that okay uh, so SIS can put where well, can put in fixed deposit Singapore government security Singapore savings bond Fixed income, unit trust, stock and share, risk, ETF, and single premium insurance plan. So which is the best? Okay. Uh, for me, that actually there is no best product in the market. It's only that which one suits you most. You have to look at your own risk appetite and your investment experience and what you really need. Then you pick the best product, 
take the best product that best suit you rather than the best product in the market. Okay. Uh, if you find this useful and do like this video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that in future you'll be notified if there's any new video coming on. And lastly, that for those that want to discuss more on how can you maximize your SRS, you can contact us or WhatsApp us at 9476-8661 to arrange for this further discussion with us. Okay, that's all for me today. Thank you everyone for listening.